What's up, bro? So I'm Gucci, and welcome to Dana Life with me. So today, I think we're just gonna do a light lift, a full body lift, and then take some cuts with, do our normal daily hitting drills, what we do, and do some BP with my brother. There it is, man. Place where I'm here every day. This is the weight room right there. And then you can see our cage. It's a nice setup we got here, you know, in beautiful Hawaii, so. Have a lot of energy because you gotta enjoy what you do and you can't do that tired, so. I just take a pre-workout and then we're gonna go get to lifting, go stretch out first, so I think let's get at it. So this is something that one of our uncles have taught us. We roll out our body, you know, make sure all the muscles get loose and we get out all the knots before we go lift. That felt good. That thing makes you yeah. nice and loose after. It's, it's, it feels good. <laughs> Some ball went well, you know. I wasn't up there for a long time. I just went up to California and Arizona, did my thing. Playing with TB SoCal, especially a kid from Hawaii, you really go up against the best competition. So to match myself up against that, it's something that I like to do each summer. So I come back down here, train, know what I have to work at. So it was just a great summer all, all around, yeah. Are we gonna do upper body first? Yeah, I mean, since it's already set up. Yeah, we'll do kabuki bar and then we'll do some rows and then we'll get into the legs. Okay. There's nothing heavy because what's it called? We we lift. I lifted yesterday. I go like five wide, five middle, yep. and then five in. Yeah, just just to warm up. Mm -hmm. Good. I mean, bench press is good, but for base, base baseball players, we want that mobility in our shoulders. So I think this is this bar helps us, helps you a lot to get strong in your upper half, throwing wise, everything, just mobility wise. You can't, you can't just do it one day and not do it the other day. So Michael gets it and we get it and that's, that's our goal. So hopefully we, we could keep pushing each other and we'll get there. Also gotta look good for the girl. <laughs> I, know, I, I even know Michael's gonna say the right answer here. <laughs> say the right answer. It's, it's obvious. For the no, say those guys, the way that they just do sports in general, it's just every day, such a passion at that school yeah you know all the guys that surrounded yeah are surrounded by him are just as crazy and and passionate about their sport as you know as he is he's a smart one went to Olani. i was actually at Olani for since kindergarten so i'm not that not that dumb either as people say you know baseball's coming around man we're going for that triple p ilh hopefully i could be on all three teams i was on it as a freshman sophomore this year and hopefully junior year we can get it again, but it's gonna take a lot of hard work. You know, it's it's crazy. The amount of bats we have. And you can look at this board right here. So you have me, Spencer, one of our main guys this year, pitching. He's here all the time. We got Kobe coming up to varsity next year, Tanner and Matt. My boy Tanner, sophomore with me on varsity starting. And Matt's gonna make a name for himself this year. We're here all the time setting our goals. Go ahead, win the ILH, and it all comes down to working hard. And now this is the best part that we have. We're fortunate enough to have a rap soto. If you don't know what a rap soto is, it's it's basically it just shows you, you know, your distance, your exit velo, how hard you're hitting. So this is something we mainly use. You know, you want that launch angle, you want that hard exit velo, that distance. It's very appealing to a college um, coach too. It's all the tangibles. It's just as running your 60, how hard you throw from shortstop. This is another thing coaches really, you know, they're picking up on. Bob keeps saying that you want music, but I told him. See, that he even asked that too, but I was telling him about, you know how when Tan and them are here and we go crazy? Oh, yeah. I think he wouldn't even hear us speaking. Uh, so I was like, you know, there's, keep playing the song. there's no point, but we got our stuff done already. That was so big for me. If you can tell, it was a nighttime video and we were out here literally 12 and we hit for that long because I was so determined to get it on film. Because I've got, I got it earlier, but we weren't filming, so, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm not leaving here, getting out of this cage until we got it. 
and I think a good six hours later, we got it, and I was stoked, and I knew right off the bat when I got it, so. <laughs> Show baby. Baby! Pick up baby. <laughs> My dog. <laughs> baby. You wanna home run that game? You pet that dog. <laughs> <laughs> We're just gonna do our daily thing, so if you can see here, we always use these two bats right there. So this is a 35 inch bat. Something that, you know, to work your bat speed, getting the, the barrel through the wall. And then this is something else we use. This is something from Japan that we found. And this thing's crazy, it's a log. But it also helps your grip, you know. I think it just makes us stronger as baseball players. So we're just gonna go off the tee, use that a little bit, check our velos off the tee. And then we're gonna go BP where we can have some fun. So we use these softballs. And the main thing with this is, being a great hitter, I think if you could drive the ball hard, oppo, that's something that a scout is gonna be like, wow. So when I was up there for a showcase, I actually hit a home run oppo. And that's when you know scouts start to pick up like, oh, if you could do that opposite, think about what you can do pool. So that's something we work on with these balls, is driving another way. So uh, someone's gonna soft toss you a ball and you're gonna try to drive it to that back corner of the net. And it's something we do before, before hitting drills as well. Sure. You really yeah, can't so find those. They really are about the size, a little bit bigger than a golf ball. Yeah. All leather. It's basically, you get a regular ball, turn into a mini, mini me, and then you get that. And then usually we don't use our regular bats most of the time because these things are a lot harder than baseballs mm -hmm. for some reason. So usually we go with uh, one of these, work on two things at once uh, with the grip strength, small ball eye hand coordination, or we go with um, the oversized, the 35, 35, yeah. and then go off of that. So you want to work up the middle, hop with these. Just sink through it, drive them. Oh. Gucci, you can get a hundred of these, bro. I know you can, bro. That'd be oh. scary. I caught down on a screw, bro. Shout out Homewood. If you're watching this, Todd, president of Homewood, he's our guy. Hopefully, if I make it big, I'll continue to use you guys back. Birch BW7. If you don't know who that is, Bobby Wood Jr. He's gonna be better than Mike Trout one day. I said it first here on the Youth Prospect video. He's just that guy. Bobby Wood's that guy. But shout out Homewood. Todd, you're my guy. Take a break and we're good. Come back out. Yeah, we're good. Let's go take a break. Let's go get water and stuff. Ooh. I gotta get the 100. This is a Mike Trout signed back. So we actually contacted somebody who does those type of signings. And they, they got it signed for us, so it's crazy. And it's a limited edition type of bat. It's a struggle. <laughs> what is going on? I realize the mistake I made. Yes. When I looked at the reviews, and only girls, girls wear it. But this could be a trend. Setting no, away. no, that's not a trend. No, that's that. Has I to like go. them. No, that um, has to go. No, I think I'm gonna keep them. That's brutal, dude. Comment if that's brutal. Just comment brutal. Oh. They're staying. They're not staying. <laughs> can we can we go hit, bro? I want hundred. Let's go hit. I got my gloves. We're good. They're staying. Right. <laughs> like them. Dude, come on now. No read? <laughs> dude, it always does that. My best hits are like never read. You're back. Getting old? Dude, you're only 20, bro. I meant to Jeez, man. just prescribe things. Jeez, man. Yeah, smart kid right there. Yolani graduate. Smart. But who has a higher GPA in high school? <laughs> St. Louis education, baby. 4.0. Let's go. 100. Come on. I mean, like, come on, dude. 97? Come on, dude. My dad threw them away. Oh, he threw them away? Yes, bro. It's Me, the... Tanner, and Matt would use it, like, a lot when we lift and stuff. It got bad. No, don't we were out of control. Like, it's... 
it may, it works, okay? Yeah, it works. Coming from a biology major, it works. It overrides your brain and then you can do crazy stuff. But it also is shown to kill brain cells. Well, I'm still 4.0. So do, do with that information <laughs> as you will. I'm not saying don't do it, but. You're 4.0, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Dude. 99.3. 3.94. I don't know what's up with this Rapsoda today. I told myself getting into here, I was gonna get 100. 99.8. I'm gonna get 100. Oh. I got 400 feet though. Yeah, wait, did you say 380 or 100 miles an hour? That's I'm getting 380. Feet. No, I'm getting 380 pretty easy, that's why. Okay. Hey, no. when in doubt, use a 34. Just make my brother feel small right now. Let's get a hundred with his bat. That'd be so brutal. So brutal. Oh yeah. This bat was good, Gooch. Oh. With his bat. That must make you feel bad, dude. I don't know why I always eat chicken sandwiches. Yesterday I had Popeye's chicken sandwich. Today, I don't know. What's your What's your top five chicken sandwiches? Oh, top five chicken sandwiches: Chick Fil A, Popeye's. Wow, the number one. KFC. Is not even here. KFC. KFC's sandwiches are good. I like McDonald's. I would say better. McDonald's is bad. That's no, not even a chicken no, sandwich. no. It's like a chicken McNugget in a bun. <laughs> so. You can say that for all chicken sandwiches. Four is Burger King. And five is Wendy's, but Wendy's only has a certain one that I like, and it's not there anymore. So, Wendy's, Burger bring it back. The, the, what is it called? The Chicken. Chicken. That Ooh. thing is is the huge bird. though. It's yeah. huge, and it's like dude, the Chicken is good, but Chick Fil A. Oh. Of course, Larry just texted me. He said, "What are you doing to get that extra exit below?" Because Larry, when you watch this, I'm just doing everything we do at your house. You're gonna watch this and be surprised I'm shouting you out. So Coach Larry is Jordan Yamamoto's dad. So he helps us a lot with arm care, getting our arms strong, and especially legs. I tell you right now, if you can handle a day at Coach Larry's without throwing up, you're legit. Also known as Caleb Lomavita. Caleb would go there and literally just fly through the weights, fly through the workouts, and we're over there just throwing up in the backyard. But Coach Larry, shout out to you. Coach Larry's a dog, he's a beast. I'm gonna work out with my coach Frank. He's one of the main coaches at St. Louis, so thank God he got me this field. And his son, he always comes around to just hit balls, you know, just get better. He likes to be around me ever since, you know, the League World Series and stuff. So I wanna make sure I give back to my coach how he gave back to me, because he, he was an amazing coach. He helped me a lot getting into St. Louis when it was like my first year there and stuff. So it's gonna be good seeing them at the field again. Seeing Kate, I haven't seen Kate in a while because I just got back not too long ago, so it's gonna be great. So let's go upstairs, eat some food, and then we'll head down there. So it's my two helmets, my two game helmets, and the thing in Little League, they give you everything. So I got these two bats, that glove, that helmet, these two pairs of gloves. You know, people would just say, you know, Little League baseball and stuff, but I don't think people realize how fast paced the game is, and it really sets you up for when you go to the big diamond. Of course, you gotta get a little bit stronger, get used to the far throws and running the bases farther, but I think, when you go into Little League and the fast pace and the pressure you, you get put on yourself, it really sets you up for when you're older and you go into another, another game environment, it's just like another game for you. But I think with Little League, it was different because when you get to that big stage already, as a, as a little kid, I mean, it's, it's hard to break. You play in front of 30, I think it was like 30,000 people and then you look up and you're like, holy crap, and you're only 12 years old. So now you want to set, you go higher. You want to go to like the college world series. You want to go to the MLB world series. Just be stuck involved in that. But it, it, shout out to Coach Gerald then. We, we worked our asses off every single day. You know, it was a nonstop thing. We'd work out at, in the morning, take a break at 12, and then work out again. I don't think people realize how hard we really had to work. And now every single kid that I see, 
they know about the little league and they want to pursue that too so i think little league all around is just great for little kids if they want to do that go that route it's also babe ruth and cover is a great route too i think just being competitive at that level you want to for sure be competitive you know you don't want to just you want to enjoy the game but you want to you know experience that competitiveness because that really helps you when you go out in the the real world for baseball high school level college level so i think this is just something we look at and it's like wow you know how f our hard work really paid off and you, you want to continue that hard work so you can make it to the next level so that's the goal bring down the food uh burger king chicken sandwich underrated it's all right mm. i love chicken sandwiches I would say there are four on my list. I don't know what I said on my list earlier. Got the fruit punch. Fries are... Their fries are bomb. You don't like their fries? Mm. He's a weird McDonald's fries is bad. Which is kind of weird. Likes McDonald's. Likes... Whitewash. Whitewash? Comes back from Washington. Everything's McDonald's. I don't think this guy likes like local mocha or anything anymore. I do. <laughs> I do. Don't make me sound like that. Okay, no, no, no. Lao Lao is, is the best yeah. thing. We're going to the field, heading down to our St. Louis field, our amazing, beautiful field. We have a big field now. We work with what we get. We have two cages. One, the cages is all ripped up, but you know, we make use of what we have. Uh, we won ILH twice, came up short in stage this year, got third, but we lost to a great team and I was injured, so I couldn't really contribute, so it kind of sucks for me to see that work hard all season long, but we're going to our field, get glove work in. I'm going with Coach Butcher, Coach Frank, and they have just, you know, his brother coaches there, Coach Shane, and the dad, so they have, man, they've been involved with Seamless forever, so you're gonna see Coach Frank, his son, his son just loves working out with me, and I love working out with him, just giving back to the young kids, and I think the nephew's there too, so we're gonna get at it, it's gonna be fun. Dude, that's hard. I mean, I would like, I like Rebel Soldiers. I think that's like a solid one everyone likes. But like, I think my go-to right now is J-Bug. Kolohe Kai is good too, but I like more of like that, you know, real Jawaiian pumping reggae. But Rebel Soldiers is where it's at for me. You excited? What were you guys doing, hitting? No, we, we no. just fielding. Fielding? Is your, uh, what's it called here? Coach Shane? No, no. your dad's not here? Yeah, so this is Coach Shane's son, Ashton. So what's up, Ashton? What's up? And this is Cade, Coach Frank's son. Yeah. So we're gonna get some ground balls in. <laughs> with the boys, let's get in here. It's our beautiful school, beautiful new gym. All boys school, St. Louis. Known for football. Tua, uh, Marcus, just some guys. But it's cool because on this wall, it shows all the professional players St. Louis has produced. And man, there's a lot. People don't realize how much there is. Like we have Rico Garcia in the league right now, pitcher. We have Jordan Yamamoto, of course. There's a lot of main guys. Hopefully Caleb could get up there, Iva, Nuu. Hopefully myself, but it takes a lot of hard work. Just, yeah. Yeah, this food's pretty brutal. See, this is what makes champions. <laughs> Seven, and they've been out here for the past two hours before I got here, just putting in the work. It's crazy. Kick it. I'm out, boys. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Good to see you. you guys gonna do drills? Look at these guys, just putting the work. Yeah, you do. You here? Come inside. Just shoot around over there. Just take a video of the new gym. Yeah. You're not gonna bother nothing. This is gonna be so sick, dude. I think it's right. Yeah, it's at the end, dude. Our triple crown we won this year. So football, 
basketball, baseball, D2 volleyball, and bowling, we all won. So I, I, that's crazy. I didn't even get a chance to see this. Ah, that's sick. This is all the professional athletes that St. Louis has produced over the years. And uh, you can tell there's mostly football guys, but you know, we have Jordan Young, we have Chad Santos, and a big name people who don't realize is that Benny Ogbayani went here. So that's cool. Brandon League just came. He used to come down to see us and work on our pitching and stuff. And we have Rico Garcia, another pitcher for St. Louis. It's just you come in here, you know, go to the bathroom and um, this reminds you that you know everyone has a chance, especially coming from St. Louis. These guys just been through it all, same like us, walk the same halls as us, so if we can put in the work, we can be good just like these guys and hopefully make it to the pros one day. I'm in a documentary right now. I'm filming a documentary right now. This is Miss Casho. This is my favorite teacher at St. Louis. Shout out to Miss Casho. I haven't seen her in so long because I've been online. It was good I saw you. Okay, bye, Miss. I love you too. She's the GOAT. Miss Castro's the GOAT. Any kid that goes to St. Louis knows who Miss Castro is. She's just the best. Long day of hard work. We're gonna get some drama juice. I don't normally get drama juice, but I'm feeling drama juice today, so let's go get some. Drama juice. Bro, when was the last time you got drama? I know, everyone in Hawaii is like, they're probably gonna be like, you're in Hawaii, you don't want shave ice or anything. You get sick of it. So we're here at Jamba. We got white gummy. Most underrated flavor out there. Shout out to the people who like one gum, white gummy. So, this is like a house we come to like, it's called, we call it our pool house. We come here just relax. My brother and his girlfriend stay up here. I mean, it's a house we don't really use, but now we use it more often. So we come out here, just chill at the end of the day, jump in the pool, just relax, eat dinner. But yeah, it's a nice house. We should come up here a lot during like when the St. Louis baseball boys. They just come over here, hang out and stuff. And man, yeah, we have great, good memories over here. So it's good fun. Oh, Phelps. <laughs> Quit baseball, professional swimmer. You said you can't swim. You can swim. <laughs> I'm tired. Jeez, dude. No Michael Phelps. <laughs> <laughs> Michael <laughs> needs help. <laughs> Brutal, dude. It's too cold for this, man. It's so what we got for dinner, we got Simon from Shiro's, and we got a hula burger and fries. And then, Gooch, show, show them what you're eating, bro, because they don't yeah. know what that is. Um, so what I got is a plate lunch. Yeah. We got uh, lao lao, which is like pork mixed with, or not mixed, but wrapped in luau leaf or taro leaf, and then they steam them stuff is super super good then we have Kahlua pig mm -hmm. everybody knows what that is and then mac salad this stuff is the best stuff you can get cheerios baby so yeah so it comes separately and then it's just noodles under here we have vegetables and then wonton wontons like dumplings so it's, this is what cheerios is most, um known for it's not like in pro city so something we kind of get not all the time but we usually get it and then, or we'll get Asian grinds on the road or my mom would cook, but yeah. It's something you kind of get a lot. I was talking with Noah and I thought this is something that we both found interesting. And I think it's something that people don't realize with me too, that I collect hats, baseball hats, and more so just exclusive kind with the side patches. So this is a lot right here. So I think, so every time I go to travel or something, Man, it's crazy. I buy at least at three fitted, or I get them online. So I think this is just something cool that a lot of people don't know about me. You know, they only see me wearing the hats, but they don't really know how much really fitted hats I have. And these go, man, these are like $50. They're expensive, man. They can get really expensive, so. They should have this much fit is I'm lucky and grateful. This is where I, I spend my money only on this and baseball stuff, so. This is something I really look forward to buying in the mainland. So this one is a Toronto Blue Jays one. It was from Hat Club. And it was specifically um, a Drake model because he's from Toronto. And this one, it got, it went out of stock very fast. So I had to buy it from a reseller. And people think I'm crazy because when I tell them I bought it for $150, people are like, why the heck would you spend that much money? But when you're like, in, when you get really into collecting hats, 
Like, I didn't even wear this yet. It's just, I'm just collecting it. It's just like how people collect baseball cards and just, they just sit in their storage or whatever for so much years. So when I, maybe when I'm older, I could sell a lot of these, but I know this now it retails for like $400. It's crazy. And it's, it's specifically the ones in here. So you could see all the side patches, all the different ones. And I know the one in the back is super expensive too. And it's just, it just, because they sell out so fast, they only make a certain amount and then people resell it. And then that's, I don't really buy off the resales because they're so expensive. Like that one was probably the one scenario because I really like that hat, but it gets expensive, man. And it's, it's crazy what people are doing. Just like with baseball cards, we collect baseball cards. So I think this is another interesting thing that people don't really know about me. So yeah, the dream, I think, yeah, I think many little goals lead up to your dream. And I think that's the most important part. Kids, you know, they have that one big dream, but they can't, they gotta accomplish these mini goals first, goals while you grow up. So I think for right now, the dream is of course, become a professional baseball player, but I know all the hard work it takes. And I think one big goal so far is that I play in college baseball. You know, it doesn't have to be D1, you know, just get to a school where I get seen, you know, um, hopefully a power five school. That's the main goal. And I think just make an impact as a freshman, do it right and, you know, continue to better myself, continue to be a, a, a leader on the field. And I think this high school season coming up, I just want to be, you know, although I'm going to be a junior, hopefully be a captain on my team and make sure that I work up to my, my big dream, which is become a professional baseball player. And I know how hard it is. I know I've seen people work um, their whole life to get there and they won't get there. So, you know, that's the big dream and I got to keep working at it. Keep, keep pushing myself, surround myself with people that have the same goal as me. And I think that's the big dream. So the big supporters, you know, my parents, my brother, uh, my grandparents, both sides. You know, I wouldn't be here without them, you know. I wouldn't have this cage, I wouldn't have all the weights I have. You know, I wouldn't get to enjoy what I do. I think if I have to, I'm lucky enough where I don't have to go out there and pay somebody to use their facilities. I have it right here in my back of my house. So just thanks to my grandparents, my parents for paying for my trip to go up there, get seen by all these scouts. And I think most importantly, just thank my family. I think that's the main people I want to thank and just hopefully I can keep making them proud as a, not only as a ball player, but as a person, you know, being a good person goes a long way. So I just wanna thank my family, my parents, my brother, um, my grandparents, and everyone who has helped me along this journey. For college, college is a big thing down here, you know? And I think the main thing for all of this college thing is you wanna go to a place where, you know, say you get injured, and you wanna go there for the education, I think that's, most important you know because baseball's not going to be around you know hopefully it's around long enough for me um, but if you never know what's going to happen so i think d1 is the goal i'm talking to d1s have d1 offers but i want to make the decision when it's the right decision i want to see the school see the place be patient on my decision and most importantly i want to see like you know i want my family to come see me come see me play see all my hard work paying off so I'll definitely say West Coast is where it's at right now. Um, just, just staying focused on West Coast, knowing what I want, being patient, and just when the time is right, I'll make my decision. I know a lot of people ask me about that because I'm still uncommitted, but it's just, it's a big topic for me, especially for me, because I want to do it the right way. I see a lot of kids nowadays, a lot of people same age as me, you know, making wrong decisions and rushing into things. So I have a lot of good mentors to tell me, you know, relax, take a step back, enjoy the process, keep working hard, and be patient, visit the school first, September 1st, junior year, and hopefully make a decision junior year. Shana Maguchi, hope you enjoyed this. You know, day in life with me, what I do every day. Shout out to Youth Prospects for having this. I think that, you know, it's good that people get to see my journey and hopefully they continue uh, with my progress and journey. So shout out to Youth Prospects and uh, signing out.